going on guys so I'm on my way home from work and I just wanted to discuss a couple things so tonight I'm gonna to be doing the gears in my 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee I did do a Dana 44 HD out of a Overland Grand Cherokee so I do have the Berry Lock axles front and back and I have a Dana 30 in the front now I was able to find plenty of information on the Dana 30 axle obviously because that's in every Jeep you could think of but what I wasn't able to find is an actual rebuild video of a Dana 44 HD so I figured I would make a video of how to do it I've only done one other axle my entire life which was a Ford 88 and it came out all right I'm just gonna make sure you know I follow all the proper specs backlash pinion preload you know everything I just figured it would be very, very useful for people in the future that are trying to do the same thing as me. Now, I know the Dana 44 HD is not the best axle. I know it has its issues. Um, it's just, if I was gonna do an axle swap, I'd be doing a one ton axle swap and I don't have the funds to go that crazy with it, but I will be walking through the steps of how to re-gear the 44 HD. So I hope you enjoy the video. All right, guys. So. This is my Jeep right here, just in case nobody's seen any of my other videos that I've posted with it. Um, it's 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It has Dana 30 front axle, Dana 44 HD rear axle out of a 2004 Overland. I couldn't tell you how many miles are on them. I got them from a junkyard, digital cluster, obviously no batteries in the junkyard. Um, pretty much, I'm just gonna go over what you need to actually do this job at least the proper way from my understanding. So first things first, you wanna make sure you have a Dana 44 HD axle, obviously. I had a noise at 65 miles an hour where it was like a vibration, I guess. I did a slip yoke eliminator. I did a Tom Woods length and drive shaft. It's all in spec, the angle, everything. Um, noise was still there. When I pulled the diff apart, I don't remember what I did with my bearings. Oh, here they are. So when I pulled the diff apart, all my bearings did not look too great. So these races are actually really, really grooved and it's just, they're done. So with the Dana 44 HD, at least with the very lock axles, your shims aren't actually on the inside. So you don't have to worry about making dummy bearings for the carrier you are gonna need the dummy bearing for the bottom of the pinion. So the bearing that goes in the inside of the axle. That one, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to grind it out. There's, there's no way around that because you're gonna have to pull it off and on to you know, set your pinion depth. And you, know, you want everything to be perfectly in spec when you do this job. You, you can't do it unless it's in spec because the axle will just, it'll make tons of noise and you'll destroy your new gears and whatever else it wants to destroy in the process. Um, so I have a very lock carrier right here. This is, um, it had 373 gears. If you have 355s, you need to get a 373 carrier because they will not accept a steeper gear. I went with 456 gears. So, I mean, if you're going with a 355 or lower, 355 carrier is fine. I, don't think they had a 44 HD with 355, so you shouldn't really have to worry about that. When you take your bearings off, you're actually gonna destroy this right here. This is an oil pump for the very lock. You definitely do not want this destroyed because your axle is not gonna work right. I picked one of these up on Quadratech. It was 60 bucks, 70 bucks, shipped. It came in like two days, not a big deal. Um, I mean, other than that, you're gonna need a lot of tools. Um, these axle bearings right here, like I said, they're new, so I'm not gonna worry about them. I'm just gonna spray them out, brake clean, and reuse them. I literally did them two weeks ago. Um, to take this apart, it's pretty straightforward. You just unbolt these plates right here, take a slide hammer, unpress your axles, and then you take your carrier out with the two bearing caps, and you need a press to unpress your bearings. You need a press to press your bearings on. 
Um, I have wheel spacers, as you can see down there. Um, I did save all my old stuff just until it's all back together. You don't really need to. Like I said, you just need that one bearing for the um, setup bearings. This is the press that I got. 140 bucks, Harbor Freight. Cheap. I bought the whole kit of these bearing separators just in case I needed them. Fun stuff. So these are 456 gears. These are standard standard gear, I believe they're called. I did get cheap fluid for now. I usually like to run Royal Purple or Mobile One, but for a 44 HD with a very lock, you need full synthetic and it needs to have friction modifier in it. Or you can buy the Mopar friction modifier and add it to whatever fluid you choose. But I think most synthetic fluids are gonna have that in it. Um, you want red Loctite. You want to brake clean, make sure everything's nice and clean when you do this. You're going to want a master overhaul kit for the axle. Um, you're going to want all your specs, torque specs, backlash, pinion preload. I work at a shop, so I just printed this out off all data. You definitely are going to need this because I couldn't find most of this information online. Um, I will be telling you, you know, what the specs are. Other than that, you're going to need a inch pound needle torque wrench to measure bearing preload. You're going to need a normal torque wrench, half inch for foot pounds. You're going to want a really, really long breaker bar or whatever you're going to use. Put a pipe on a ratchet or whatever, but you got to crush that crush sleeve, which is not an easy task. So I'm going to go through this kit really quick. This is your gear marking compound, paintbrush. So you check your wear pattern. This is the inner pinion bearing. And this is your outer pinion bearing. These bearings right here are your carrier bearings. Um, these are your carrier shims. These are your pinion shims, pinion nut, red Loctite, casket maker, new bolts, Two crush sleeves. I don't know why I have two. Usually they only come with one. Yours might come with two. I couldn't tell you. Never gotten one with two before. And then obviously you need your gears. And we'll get to work now. You're going to start by assembling the carrier first. Being new gears, you're still going to want to spray these down with brake clean because there is there was foam in there and that's just not stuff that you want in a freshly built axle, you want it to be as clean as possible. And before we do our final install, I'm going to spray everything down again. I got my bolts over here, the Loctite. I have my carrier bearings getting ready to press on. I have my new, this, this is called the axle plenum, but it's essentially just an oil pump. It just picks the oil up from the bottom. This, I, this needs to face down when it's installed, but we'll get to that later. Um, I did go ahead and I cleaned this whole entire thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bearing up like that. And then we're going to press it on. You want to press on the inner lip, not the outer, because you'll mess the bearing up. So it needs to be on that inner lip. Unfortunately, I only have one hand. So I'm not going to videotape me actually doing it. But I figured I would explain it to you. And hopefully, you know, you get you get the point. Um, see you guys in a minute. You're gonna wanna put axle, axle um, differential fluid. You're gonna wanna put it all around this seal. Um, there's a seal here and there's, this looks like a seal too. It's rubber. I'm not entirely sure, but it's, it feels like a seal. So I'm just gonna lube that up, lube that up. And this just presses right on there and then you put your bearing things pressed on here i had to use um an assortment of things i actually i used the old bearing and then i used that socket put it on top and the socket alone that's the biggest socket that i have it actually didn't fit here like it, it didn't slide over so i ended up using the old bearing because i knew that was you know the same size as this bearing pressed it down pressed it in Make sure this is fully sealed. This actually, that other gasket that I wasn't sure about, that actually does seal around the whole entire outside. So you want to make sure this is pressed all the way on. 
before you even think about pressing this bearing on. You press the bearing on, make sure you keep the races together. Um, I was always taught to keep them together, but I mean, I guess with new bearings, it probably doesn't really make a difference, but I'm just keeping them together. It's the way that I've always done it. Um, so right now we're gonna get ready to put the ring gear on. If we got new bolts for the ring gear, I suggest you get the kit with new bolts. Um, I believe those bolts are only a one-time use and you're gonna wanna put red Loctite and they get torqued to, um, let, me, let me look at the specs. I believe it's 60 foot pounds is what they get torqued to, but you definitely wanna make sure everything is 100% torqued here. Um, let's see. This is for the 355, 373. Ring differential bearing preload actuation. Backlash pinion bearing preload. Um, all right, so ring gear bolts get torqued to 100 foot pounds is what you're gonna want right here ring gear bolts 136 newton meters or 100 foot pounds i have a torque wrench that reads in foot pounds so we're going to be doing 100 foot pounds and i know that seems like it's going to be a pain to torque considering that thing's going to move but i'm actually going to use the press to hold it for me like a vice because i don't have a vice so I'm just gonna press down on that, not too tight, it doesn't have to be crazy, just enough to hold it. And then I'm gonna torque all those bolts in a crisscross pattern, like a wheel. And um, see when we, when we get it done. This way that I found of doing this, this is actually a press fit. So you're gonna have to tighten the bolts down to press this on. You're not gonna be able to press it on by hand, it's just not gonna happen. Um, the easiest way, especially if you're working by yourself, you only have two hands um you're gonna want to start two bolts you know one here one there opposite sides don't tighten them just get them enough to start so it'll hold this up don't put no loctite on these ones but remember which ones do not have loctite don't forget because they do need loctite now you can go ahead put your loctite on all your other bolts put them in here you know, all the holes. I have a 3 8 gun, which I'm gonna tighten them with, and then I'm gonna torque them after. I'm not gonna go crazy with the gun, you know, just enough to press that on there and then they'll get torqued. Um, like I said, just make sure you take these ones back out and put Loctite on them, you know, same process, start pattern. And you should be good, this will all be set. Now, like I said before, the shims on this particular axle do not go underneath this bearing. Most Dana axles, the shims are going to go underneath this bearing, and you're going to have to grind the inside of the old bearing out so you have a setup bearing. Luckily, with the very lock axles, the shims go on the outside, so I don't have to do any of that, which makes my life a lot easier because let me tell you, it is not easy to grind these bearings out and make them so they you know slide on and off by hand because you press this bearing off, you could throw this bearing in the garbage. You know, the bearing separator is going to ruin it. Um, so definitely make sure you save your old bearings if you do have a different axle that the shims are on the inside because you will need them and don't damage them. Okay, so I put it in the press. I put a block of wood down because you these are new bearings. You don't want to use anything hard there. And I marked the bolts as I torqued them just so I knew all of them were torqued. Now it's time to get to the pinion and then um, see how the wear pattern is and backlash and everything. All right guys, so now the only new part that you should be using when you set up is your pinion. That's it. Nothing else is new here. This is the original shim with the old gears. This is one millimeter thick. If you're wondering how I measured that, it was with a caliper. So the way this gets assembled, is the shim goes down first. Now remember, I ground these bearings out. You have to grind these out because this will be coming on and off and you, you don't want to damage a new bearing. So I ground these out enough to where that just slides on there. It's not super loose, but it's not crazy tight. You're gonna use your old crush sleeve 
which is going to go like this down there this bearing i had to grind out also this is the one that sits towards the outside of the axle again this one is actually still a little tight but it does go down there and then this is just the washer so your yoke doesn't ride on the bearing definitely don't want that this you're going to reuse regardless the kit didn't come with a new one and it's just the spacer it's not anything too crazy and then you're going to have your yoke which is going to go up top like that your nut and your washer you're going to just you know tighten that down so it's tight because right now we're only looking for how the gears are going to mesh how this is going to ride on the ring gear once you get a good pattern then you can go ahead you can put your new shim to whatever thickness you find gives you the best pattern it's going to be different for each job you can put your new bearing new crush sleeve new top pinion bearing like i said this washer gets reused and then you put your yoke and your new nut also while you're doing this you don't use your new nut these are locking nuts they're they're not perfectly circle they're oval if you put the new nut and you take it on and off you're going to damage these threads reuse the old stuff that's i can't you know tell you enough reuse the old stuff and um once once i get a good wear pattern we'll we'll move on to the next step i'm sorry i'm i only got two hands and i don't have a tripod and i'm using a phone to record this i'm sorry if the quality is not the best but i'm more than happy to answer any questions if you guys comment below um and yeah i'll definitely help you out when i can but thank you all right guys so these bearing races you want to make sure that these are pressed all the way in there's a lip back there there's also another one you know in the front both bearings are going to ride on those when you press those in you want to use something soft you don't want to use a metal punch or anything like that i use the brass punch and a um bearing seal driver that i have unfortunately mine is plastic i would suggest the aluminum one i guess it is and just make sure those are in flat. They have to sit on that back wall flat. Otherwise, the bearing's going to ride, you know, crooked and just it's not going to work right. So right now, I'm getting ready to put the pinion in with all the old stuff. I'm going to put the carrier in. I'm going to see how the gears are meeting with um, the paint that they give you. If we have a good wear pattern, then I know that, you know, my one millimeter stock shim is going to be the right shim. We're going to take the pinion back out. We're going to put all the new bearings on, all of that. And, um, and we're going to go ahead and set our backlash. All right, guys. So last night was, was a very, very, very long night. I didn't get everything done, but... I got the, the pinion in there with, you know, the old bearings and whatnot. I didn't get a chance to check the wear pattern yet. I'm going to do that in a little while. But um, the stock shims for the carrier were way too tight. I actually took out, I took out about point, point 0.2 millimeters on each side. The carrier slides in there nice now. You, you want to be able to have to like kind of press it in but it shouldn't be like extremely tight and it shouldn't be extremely tight coming out that is just way too tight when i used the stock shims it was it was tight and i wasn't thinking i put it all the way in there and i wanted to get it stuck in there it was just a disaster to get it back out so I, I just spent i spent like two hours trying to get the carrier back out i finally got it back out and i um subtracted the shims and goes in there nice now you still have to pry it out with like a pry bar but that's pretty normal um so we'll, we'll see how the gears are meshing and then we'll set our pinion up for the last time set the preload and then we'll um we'll set our backlash and put the rest of the axle back together and we'll be off for the first test drive all right so when setting your wear pattern this pattern actually looks pretty decent it's a little bit spread out 
which I would like it to be more non-spread out, like more just in the center there, but that one we can live with. But the, I believe this is the coast on this side. As you can see, it's too far towards the, the locker. So we need to take a shim we need to take a little bit of shim away from the pinion and that should more even that out so let's see what happens all right guys so what i'm doing now i took the carrier back out um there wasn't much backlash so i'm actually going to subtract a millimeter on the ring gear side i'm going to actually add a millimeter on the opposite side what that's going to do it's going to move the whole carrier to the left and it should create more backlash hopefully um also i'm going from one millimeter shim on the pinion and i'm going to move it back 0.2 millimeters and that should give me more of a center pattern so the, the further the further you move it out like towards you if you're looking where the cover goes the closer it's going to be towards the inside so it's going to be opposite of the way you're looking at it when you're measuring your your wear pattern um so i'm going to take some away and hopefully we can get that coast side i believe that is i believe the bottom side's the coast side correct me if i'm wrong um but that we need to go more towards the center the drive side didn't look too bad it was a little bit more spread out than what I would personally like to see, but this could correct that also. I mean, I won't know until I get it all back in there and see how everything meets and meshes up and, and we can um, start measuring the backlash up. All right, guys, so this is what you want. See how it's perfectly right in the middle? That's the coast side. And we have a similar pattern for the drive side this is the pattern you want perfect right in the middle right in the middle it's perfect now we got to set the backlash and we're going to recheck the pattern again after we set the backlash make sure it doesn't change this is a good pattern this is what you're looking for all right so <clears throat> got the pinion in you know permanently now put the both new bearings re put the 0 .0, 0 0.8 shims which I had a good pattern with but the new bearings new seal new pinion seal put those shims back new crush sleeve and now we're setting preload pinion preload which is done with this guy right here I have adapters on it because that's a 30 three millimeter nut which you're not going to get a quarter inch drive 33 millimeter socket so you just use adapters like that this is a needle torque wrench measures in inch pounds we're looking for very very little bit of preload like maybe six inch pounds not not much um just a little bit but it is different if you're reusing old bearings or new bearings um, if you're doing this job, chances are you're using new bearings, so you're going to want to go with the new bearing spec. And um, I'll be back after this is all set up. Socket here, whatever combination of attachments you're using. And you just want to spin this, and it'll, it'll tell you. I'm right at 30. As you can see, it spins right at 30 inch pounds. So the spec is 25 to 35 for new bearings. Um, I want it to go a little bit tighter because the bearings are going to break in. Believe it or not, this is actually pretty hard to turn for, you know, 30 inch pounds. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it really is kind of a lot. Um, you just want to make sure that they are preloaded good and you want to make sure this spins with no issue. Mine's nice and smooth. So we're gonna call that good. I'm gonna put the carrier back in. We're gonna recheck the backlash. Make sure everything stayed in spec. We're gonna recheck the wear pattern on the gears. Just make sure everything's good. And um, we're gonna reassemble our axle and 
should be good to go. All right, guys. So I finished it up, took it for a drive. Everything's good. We don't got no weird noises sitting right here on the ground. I still got to do the front, but there's plenty of videos on the Dana 30. I just couldn't find any on the 44. So I figured I'd make a video for it just for, you know, people trying to do it in the future. This will only pertain to a, a ZJ or a WJ, which has the 44A, the aluminum housing. Um, you just want to make sure everything's in spec. That's all I can really say. Um, I ended up setting it with 0.6 backlash, 0 0.006 backlash, which is on the higher end of the specs, but it's in spec, so I left it be. Um, I got 30 inch pounds of preload on the pinion and there's no side to side movement whatsoever. Both wear patterns for the gears are right dead in the middle. Um, I didn't film installing anything because, you know, if you don't know how to put the axle together and take it apart, you shouldn't be doing this job. I just mainly did this to, you know, tell you guys the all the specs because... I, it was it was a disaster trying to find them online and it just you know I wound up looking everywhere and then I wound up just getting all the specs from all data because I couldn't find a definite answer of you know carrier preload and pinion preload and all that stuff so with your carrier there's you you can't really measure the preload on the carrier so what I did was you know I found a couple of people that said just make sure it fits in there snug like where you have to barely tap it in with a mallet like you know just give it a little bit of a, a nudge to get it in there and then um that'll set the preload correct and then you know just measure your backlash from there um i did find all the stock shims were just way off they didn't fit anywhere near what they were supposed to fit um the carrier shims were way too tight it was hard to get the the carrier in and out with the stock shims and it was just way too much. They were nowhere near where they should be. Um, the pinion was only 0.2 millimeters off, which, you know, I just subtracted 0.2 millimeters. It had a one millimeter shim stock. So now it has 0.8 of a millimeter. It doesn't even have one millimeter. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything's good. For the pinion nut, you're definitely gonna want a strong impact gun to crush the crush sleeve. Um, you could do it by hand too, but you're gonna have a lot of fun doing that and holding the pinion is gonna be hard. With an impact gun, you just hold it with your hand, just put some gloves on because it's gonna vibrate a lot and um, it's gonna hurt your hand. If you don't have gloves and just crank it down and you do it little by little as the preload gets tighter and tighter, it does get very tight, very quick. So you don't wanna go crazy. You wanna do a little bit, check it, a little bit, check it until it's good and um, I mean, it made a huge difference. If you guys are lifted on a bigger tire, your transmission's not shifting right, your speedometer's off, you don't have power, It's it feels better than it did stock. It accelerates faster. Um, the transmission shifts great now. It's It actually goes into overdrive when it's supposed to. Um, I would highly suggest doing gears if you have a lifted Jeep. It's It's, it's just a night and day difference. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And like I said, I know I didn't actually film the process of doing the work. I tried to explain it the best I could. If you have any questions, you know, comment below. And um, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer questions for anybody that, that has any. And um, make sure you subscribe and like because I'm going to be making more videos. And um, yeah, you guys enjoy the rest of your night. All right, so before I go ahead and close this video out I just want to go over all the specs for everything um, exactly tool list you're gonna need to complete this job um, so your ring gear backlash is gonna be between 0 0.003 and 0 0.006 your pinion bearing preload with the original bearings, if you're not doing a full rebuild, is going to be between 10 and 20 inch pounds. Your pinion bearing preload with new bearings is going to be between 25 and 35 inch pounds. Um, your 
differential cover bolts get torqued to 30 foot pounds. I don't torque those, I just tighten them by hand. Um, your bearing cap bolts are going to be 63 foot pounds. Your ring gear bolts are going to be 100 foot pounds. Um, your pinion nut, it says 220 to 280. You really got to measure that with bearing preload. Um, torque spec doesn't really tell you anything. Um, you're going to need an inch pound torque wrench. Um, um, I can only find quarter inch that read as low as I needed. So I got a quarter inch and I got adapters for it and a pinion nut, so 33 millimeter. So you're going to have to go from quarter inch to half inch. I have a quarter inch to three eighths, three eighths to half inch, you know, it accepts a half inch socket. Um, you're going to want obviously really strong impact gun. I got a snap on half inch drive impact gun. Um, you need a magnetic base and dial indicator. You need a digital caliper to measure the shim thickness. You need a 19 millimeter socket for your wheels. 15 millimeter socket for the outer plates for the bearings. 18 millimeter for the caliper. Um, 19 millimeter for the bearing caps. Uh, um, your sway bar, whatever bolts you have in there. I had snapped one, so I have bolts from Home Depot in there. Um, yeah, other, other than that, that's pretty much it. You're gonna need um, 75, 140 differential fluid. That's for severe duty. I think they call for other fluid if you're not severe duty. I was just put severe duty. I got big tires and I take this thing off road. So this definitely goes through severe duty. Um, you definitely want to, um, not use the stock shims. Like I was originally saying, they didn't even fit. It was way too tight. I ended up getting the carrier stuck. It took me about two hours to get the carrier out. It was just ridiculous. The carrier should just be a snug fit. It should stay in by itself. It shouldn't fall out by itself. Um, and that'll be good for that. Um, the pinion was only 0.2 too much. And you're gonna take about two and a half quarts of fluid. But just make sure everything's good, make sure the wear pattern's good. It'll be good to go.